Hi, I'm Jay John. We're here in London for the Just 10 series. The Just 10 series is based on God's 10 commandments. And we're going to be looking at the 10 commandments in reverse order. And we're looking at number 10, do not covet. And the title is how to find true contentment. find true contentment. However long you take agonizing over the menu, deciding which dessert to have, when the person's next to you arrives, you realize you've made the wrong choice. <laughs> the average family ambition is to make as much money as they are spending. But our yearnings will always exceed our earnings. Just when we think we are going to make ends meet, someone moves the ends. However much we earn, we are always saying, I don't know where it all goes. I see it, I want it, I've got to have it. And many people can't resist a sale. 52 easy payments. I've never met an easy payment in my life. <laughs> if it was easy, you would have paid for it. Now here is a wise motto, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Use it up, use it up. Wear, it out. wear it out, make it do, make it do. Or, do or do without. That's your motto for the day. Now, some of us may even need plastic surgery. Hmm? I think some of us need plastic surgery. I've got my wife's credit card here. Some of us need plastic surgery. Some of us need to cut up our credit cards. Cut them up. Some of us may need to do that. The tenth commandment reads, do not covet your neighbor's house or anything else your neighbor owns. Exodus 20 verse 17. The word covet means to desire with the intent to own something that can never be rightfully yours. And today the word we use for covet is materialism. And the problem is the attitude of more doesn't give us contentment and materialism can cause many problems in our lives. Let me mention a few. Materialism can cause worry. Okay, Jesus said this, Luke 12 verse 15, don't be greedy for what you don't have. Life is not measured by how much we own. You see, when we focus on things, we worry about them. We worry we don't have enough or we worry about keeping what we have. And the number one concern people have today is 
money. And most people's financial problems are simple. They're short of money. Materialism can cause weariness. Listen to this proverb from the Bible. Proverbs 23 verse 4. Don't weary yourself trying to make yourself rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the frantic rush to get ahead or just to keep up, we get tired. And the Bible says, slow down. Slow down. We lose our health to make money. And then we lose our money to restore our health. Materialism can cause gloom. The Bible, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. Some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. You see, some people despair when they can't have what they want. If you can't have everything you want, make the best of everything you have. Please don't draw any wrong conclusions from what I am saying. The Bible does not condemn wealth. It does not condemn possessions. Nowhere does the Bible say that money is evil. What it does say is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's the love of money that is the root of all kinds of evil. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. You see, God is not opposed to wealth. God is opposed to the worship of it. Jesus talked a great deal about money. In fact, 11 of the 39 parables that Jesus told were concerned with money and possessions. And Jesus did say, it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Let me ask you a question. Are you content? Are you content? How do we find true contentment? Let me give you the principles. Principle one, be grateful for what we already have. Principle one, please repeat after me. Be grateful for what we already have. The best way to have a contented state of mind is to count our blessings, not our cash. You see, we think when and then, you know, when I get a bigger house, then I'll be happy. When I get a better car, then I'll be happy. When and then, and we're never happy. Don't buy into the myth of more, thinking that having more can actually make you happy. Learn to be content while having aspirations and goals. A man had no shoes and complained until he met a man who had no feet. Do you have an attitude of gratitude. Let's be grateful for what we already have. Principle two, recognize the limitations of wealth. Principle two, recognize the limitations of wealth. Now, one way to teach children the value of money is to borrow from them. If you've not done that, I'd encourage you to do it. Try and borrow money from your children to teach them the value of money. Money can buy medicine, but it cannot buy health. Money can buy a house, 
but it cannot buy a home. Money can buy companionship, but it cannot buy friendship. Money can buy entertainment, but it cannot buy happiness. Money can buy food, but it cannot buy an appetite. Money can buy a bed, but it cannot buy sleep. Money can buy a crucifix, but it cannot buy a savior. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 10, those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. Things satisfy for a while, but then they lose their thrill. Possessions do not give us permanent happiness, and they do not give us permanent security. What makes us happy? No thing. No thing. A man asked God how long a million years was to him. God replied, a million years to me is just like a single second in your time. The man asked, God, what is a million pounds to you? God replied, a million pounds to me is just like a single penny to you. The man asked, God, could I have one of your pennies? God replied, certainly, just a second. <laughs> True contentment is found not in having everything we want, but in not wanting to have everything. Recognize the limitations of wealth. Okay, principle number three, focus on people, not possessions. Principle three, focus on people, not possessions. We can covet so much that things become more important to us than people. Possessions cannot compensate for unhappy relationships. Relationships bring happiness, not things. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 verse 27, greed brings grief to the whole family. In our strivings for riches, our marriages can break apart and our children can become more like distant relatives. The best thing that parents can give their children is time, not treasure. Our children need our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, not our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E we love people and we use things. If we love things, we will end up using people. Maturity is saying we have enough. Are you neglecting your relationships and responsibilities as a parent or a friend? Focus on people, not possessions. Principle number four, look beyond what is temporary. Principle four, look beyond what is temporary. So the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. We need to live our lives in the light of eternity. And Jesus said in Mark 8, verse 36, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? We need to realize that there is a whole lot more going on than just the here and now. Our life here on earth 
It's just the blip on the eternal screen. According to the Bible, the length of a good life is three score years and ten, okay, which is 70 years. If we allocate 10 years per day of the week, okay, 10 years for Monday, 10 years for Tuesday, 10 years for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay. If we journey through my life, just my life, I've already walked through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm Sunday morning. How's your weekend looking? I'm Sunday morning. Now you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Granny's a bit older than that. How does that work? Well, sometimes God gives us an extra bank holiday Monday. <laughs> sometimes God gives us an extra bank holiday Tuesday. But not many people get an extra Wednesday. But even if you got three score years and ten, and you got an extra Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you lived a hundred years here on earth, your life would be a blip on the eternal screen. Look beyond what is temporary. Principle five, be a giver. Principle five, be a giver giver. I think there is often a lack of generosity in our world today. Why did Jesus talk so much about giving? Because giving is the antidote to coveting. We read in Acts 20, 35, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There's great need in our churches. There is great need in our communities. There is great need in our world. Is there one thing that we can do to live simply so that others can simply live? My wife, Killy, and I, we had three sons. We have three sons. And when they were little, I bought them three tins each, three tins each, and I labeled each tin, give, save, spend. And they each had three tins, give, save, spend. And each week we'd give them pocket money and we would explain the principle of giving, the principle of saving, and yes, you can put some others to spend. And it, it warmed my heart when I saw them putting more of their pocket money into the give tin than they did in the other tins. If I was doing that again, we've got grandchildren now, don't know if their parents are going to choose to do that. I changed one of the words. I, I would label the words give, save, live. Giving creates joy. Saving creates peace. Living creates freedom. Living, saving, giving. Three principles to apply in our lives. Be a giver. Principle number six, find our significance and security in Jesus. We do not find contentment through possessions or pleasure or power. Contentment in life comes through purpose. I've got in my pocket a brand new $20 bill. It's worth $20, okay? But it's clean, it's crisp, $20. Okay, now I know we had cleaners here before we started this service, but you know, we've all walked onto the stage with shoes from the outside, so a bit of dust, a bit of debris. You know, it's, it's here, let's rub a bit more. Yeah, I can see it. 
bit of debris, a little bit of dirt. It's a bit dirty now. It was very clean. It's not quite clean now. A moment ago, it was clean and it was worth $20. Now it's got dirt on it. It hasn't lost its value. It's worth $20. But it's crisp. It's nice. Scrunch it up. We now have a creased, scrunched up $20 bill. A moment ago, it was clean and crisp. It was worth $20. It then got dirt on it and it didn't lose its value. It then got all creased up, hasn't lost its value. It doesn't matter how dirty, how creased you think you are, you have never lost your value in God's eyes. We, you and I, are so valuable, so valuable that Jesus died for us. I love the story of the famous artist who went back to the very small rural country community where he was born and brought up. He's walking around some of the village stores and there's an antique shop. He looks in the window. He sees one of his paintings. He couldn't believe it. How could one of his paintings end up in the window of this antique shop? It was a painting that he'd painted years before he was famous. The frame was broken. The picture was scratched and dirty, but it was his. But he couldn't go into the antique shop and say to the manager, that's my painting, give it back to me. He couldn't say that. If he wanted it back, he had to buy it back before he could clean it, before he could restore it, before he could reframe it. That is what Jesus did when he died on the cross for you and for me. He was buying us back so that he could clean us, restore us, reframe us. The grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. The grass is not greener on this side of the fence. The grass is greener when we water it. <laughs> it's not greener over that side of the fence. It's not greener on this side of the fence. It's greener when we water it. Now, we may need a financial manager. Some of us may need that. Some of us may need someone to help us and guide us regarding our income and expenditure. We might need a finance manager. But all of us need a life manager. And the word in the Bible for that is Lord. 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 In the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, there's this beautiful picture of Jesus standing outside of a door of a house knocking with these words. I stand at the door, Jesus says, knocking. If you hear the knock, open the door. Let me in. Let me in. My friend Andy Konomides, after many months of helping me to understand what Christianity was about, showed me that picture in the Bible. And he said, have you heard Jesus knocking on the door? I said, I think so. He said, have you opened the door? I said, where's the door? He said, don't worry about where the door is. Ask Jesus to break the door down. <laughs> and I did. On the 9th of February, 1975, I knelt down, first time I knelt down, and I, I simply said, Jesus, if you're knocking on my door, 
wherever this door is, break this door down because I want you in my life. I need you as my life manager. I need you as my coach. I need you as my Lord. I need you to be my guide. And my life changed radically. My whole focus, my perspective completely changed. Please don't pretend to be a Christian when you can actually become one. <laughs> the word Christian has got the word Christ in it. And if you remove the word Christ from the word Christian, you're left with I-A-N. Ian isn't going to help you. <laughs> now, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that Ian isn't a good man. Maybe if you had a puncture on your tire, he might be able to help you. But he's not going to be your life manager. He's not going to transform you. He's not going to change your eternity for you. If you want to be a Christian, you have to connect with Christ. For those of you that are tuned in, if you want to do that, why don't you pray this prayer that I'm going to pray now? Jesus, I come to you now just as I am. I know I have broken your commandments and I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you now, would you please forgive me? Cleanse my life. Set me free from the past. I open the door of my life now. I invite you in. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. <laughs>